Imagine a version of Earth 50 million years in the future, one where humanity has vanished and extraordinary new creatures now populate the planet. This hypothetical future is the topic of the speculative zoology book After Man, written by a founder of the genre, Dougal Dixon. The book is part of a trilogy alongside Man After Man and The New Dinosaurs. I have a video on The New Dinosaurs elsewhere in the archive. But After Man is Dixon's original masterwork and an influence behind other series like The Future is Wild and C.M. Kozman's infamous All Tomorrows. Its impact is no surprise, as the post-human Earth Dixon brings to life within the pages feels so familiar and yet so alien. And the biology of the futuristic animals he showcases are so strange, it's worth taking a closer look. So, for this entry into the archive, we're going to break down the animal ecosystems of the far future, bearing in mind that, as I mentioned in my new dinosaurs video, some of the science is outdated, and it's impossible to know exactly what such a world would look like. Think of this book and this video as just an interesting guess. So let's leap forward 50 million years and discover what fantastic species might now reign over the planet. Beginning in the vast temperate forests and grasslands of this reborn Earth, the planet's biome distribution has shifted dramatically. 50 million years from now, tectonic movements will likely rearrange the continents, pushing Africa into Eurasia, Eurasia into North America, and separating North and South America. In these new transcontinental regions, Dixon imagines you can find various species of rabux, sizable swift-footed grazers with strange appearances. As you can imagine, rabux are descended from modern-day rabbits, but have become much larger with longer legs. This is because the rabux now occupy the same evolutionary grazing niche once held by deer, which have declined in this hypothetical future. The rabux are preyed upon by the phalanx, a mid-sized predator species with scissor-like molars. These carnivores are roughly wolf-sized. Despite this, however, the phalanx aren't the descendants of wolves at all, but a very distant offshoot of none other than the rat. And I will say, I'm certainly glad that wolf-sized rats aren't something we have to deal with in our time. Moving into the forests, you can find the oak leaf toad, one of my personal favorite new species. These curious amphibians get their name from the peculiar leaf-shaped growth on their back, which helps with camouflage. Many modern toads employ camouflage of their own, though few at the same remarkable level as the oak leaf. Another way oak leaf toads are different from most modern amphibians is that they're true carnivores, large enough to eat small mammals instead of just insects. And within the nearby wetlands, the bizarre reed still lurks, searching for prey with its sinuous neck and balancing on its platform-like feet. Despite appearances, the reed stilt is actually a descendant of insectivores like hedgehogs. Over millions of years, these animals lost their quills and became larger and larger as they transitioned into mid-sized predators. Continuing on to the pine trees of the northern coniferous forests, we have the Hornheads, a large animal with unique horns for defense, which subsist off moss and lichen. These species are a larger, more defensive incarnation of the antelope, trading the characteristic speed of their ancestors for size and security from predators. And speaking of predators, the Pam threat is among the most dangerous within the coniferous forests. These creatures are descended from ferrets, who are also carnivores in the modern day, just not quite as dangerous ones. But even the Pam threat sometimes think twice about tangling with this next animal, the spine-tailed squirrel. As you can tell by the name, they're most closely related to modern ground squirrels, although they've taken a page out of the porcupine's handbook and now sport long, pointy quills for warding off predators. A creative and effective survival strategy. Moving even further northwards, we arrive at the windswept tundra in below polar regions. Here you can find the woolly gigantelope, a thick-furred beast with massive forward-facing horns for clearing snow off the vegetation it consumes. As you can likely tell by the name, this species is another offshoot of the modern antelope, although its lumbering size and massive horns make it, in many ways, similar to a rhino. In the nearby icy mountains dwell the sure-footed gorath, a species well-equipped for vertical movement upon the steep slopes. 
this high elevation species is likely the descendant of none other than the goat, with the horns of the modern goat the precursor to the single bony plate the Goreth uses for territorial displays. And even further north, within the icy waters of what we call the Arctic Circle, the leviathan-sized vortex and smaller porpin swim through the cold waters. The vortex is the new largest creature on planet Earth, and a clear analog to whales, while the porpin shares many similarities to the modern porpoise or dolphin. Despite this, the two animals are in fact descended from none other than penguins, who over eons became fully aquatic and swelled to unfathomable sizes. So we've got more fantastical creatures to cover, including my personal favorite, but since we're halfway through the list, if you're enjoying this content, please consider taking a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to stay up to date on all things curious. Continuing on, heading much further south to the equator, we find a vast sequence of deserts. Here, Dixon imagines the rather unfortunate looking desert leapers roam the sands. These bulbous tailed animals look and hop like kangaroos, but they're actually another descendant of modern rodents. The desert leaper also employs the same unique survival strategy as the camel, as the creature's large tail, like a camel's hump, contain specialized fat deposits, which allow it to go without food for long periods. Even more wrinkly than the desert leaper is the desert shark, an animal with a truly unfortunate appearance. Their hairless bodies are a carryover from their similarly alarming looking ancestor, the naked mole rats. And like naked mole rats, the sand sharks, which have no relation to actual sharks, spend most of their time burrowing underground to regulate body temperature. And the last creature in the desert is the root sucker, a much friendlier looking fellow, with hard plates for defense and long front claws for digging up the roots of the succulents it feeds on. The root sucker is the evolutionary legacy of the armadillo, an animal that shares its armored shell and also uses its front claws for digging for food, so you can kind of understand where the lineage comes from. Continuing on, also near the equator, a belt of tropical grasslands flourishes, in a climate similar to what supports elephant populations today. But instead of elephants, the lumbering Rundihorn and southern Gigantelope now dominate the grassy fields. Both species occupy a similar niche to modern elephants, as the heaviest land animals on the new savanna, and perhaps the heaviest land animals anywhere in this new world. As the name implies, these species are yet another descendant of the antelope, if you can believe it. But where there are grazers, there are predators, and the Hurain are a truly bizarre looking species which preys on the Gigantelope and Rundihorn. Despite the build and overall coloring of their bodies almost resembling that of a modern cheetah, as you can probably tell by the faces, the Horain are a descendant of primates, which have become fully carnivorous ambush predators. And even more horrifying are the Raboons, another primate offshoot which became a grass-dwelling carnivore. Descendants of the modern, much less frightening looking baboon, the Raboons are no longer content to feed on plants and fruit alone, becoming full-on scavengers. Like their baboon ancestors, however, they have a close family structure and live in groups instead of going it alone. Further south, in the vast tropical forests of the world, the long-trunked zarander feed on the high leafy branches. Despite their trunks, the zarander aren't actually related to elephants, but to modern-day wild boars. It's hard to see the family resemblance, but 50 million years is a lot of time for a species to adapt to a new way of life. Traveling along to tropical rivers, we've got the Swimming Monkey. The name kind of tells you everything you need to know about this one. They're a monkey, but they're good at swimming. A pretty straightforward creature. And in the same boat, we have the Swimming Anteater, which once again is an anteater, but good at swimming. You get it. Much more unique is the unfortunately named Mud Gulper, a species which occupies a similar niche in the swampy waters as the modern day hippopotamus. But despite having a very similar looking snout, the Mud Gulper is yet another animal descended from a species of rodent. In arriving at our final destination, we have the isolated and diverse world of islands. In particular, the enormous island of Lemuria, which broke off from the modern African continent, is home to some of the most striking species this new world has to offer. Meet the Night Stalker, an animal so strange it twists one's mind just looking at it. 
The four-limbed predatory night stalker is a descendant of the bat, and has given up the wings of its ancestors in favor of a fully terrestrial existence. But the night stalker isn't the only descendant of the bat worth mentioning. The last species on our list is the fluor, an absolutely absurd looking animal which resembles a flower in sight and smell to lure in insects. Crazy though this might seem, it's not actually that far off from how Venus flytraps catch their prey in the modern day. Although such a trait evolving in an animal species is a truly unusual concept. And for that reason, despite its appearance, it's my personal favorite. And that's the end of our voyage 50 million years into the future. Like I said in my new dinosaurs video, Dougal Dixon's work, while just an entertaining guess at the future, is worth checking out if you ever get the chance. In the meantime, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please lend your support. And like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon if you haven't already to stay up to date on all things curious. See you in the next video.